Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. And today we're taking a look at the best Swiss Army knife alternatives that you can get right now leading into 2021. Let's check them out. So we all know and love Swiss Army knives. I know I do. I carry a Victorinox model with me every day. Uh, but they're definitely the, the 800 pound gorilla in the room. They've got a ton of models, just the breadth of what they have available is pretty astonishing. As such, it's actually hard for a lot of companies to kind of crack into that, that niche. But there are some few options out there if you want something that's a little bit different from what Victorinox has to offer. So that's what we're going to look at today. Uh, now, obviously, most Swiss Army knives are built on a slip joint mechanism, that old school pocket knife. And while there are some slip joints or there are some Swiss Army knives, with just a single or two blades. I'm not gonna talk about uh, like old school case knives that are just multi-blade models. That's not really what we're thinking of when we think Swiss Army knife. Uh, but there is one kind of knife that fits that old school kind of vibe that does sneak in, and that's the Scout pattern knives. Now these are slip joint based multi-tools, but because they have oftentimes antler or bone or look-alike handles, they get that kind of old school case knife vibe or old school pocket knife vibe with the functionality of a quote unquote Swiss Army knife. And you can still get these today and they range quite a bit in price. This is on the more affordable side. This is the Schrade Uncle Henry Scout for about 18 bucks. And they're sort of a deviation or a variant from Boker. This is the Camp Knife, right? I think that's what they call it. Let me check my notes. Yes, the camp knife with a few different handle covers and these start a little bit over 200. Uh, but there's a few extra tools on that boker, whereas this Schrade has pretty much the classic complement. And I'll show those to you. You've got a main blade, usually a spear point like this. You've also typically got an awl directly opposite that. And then you've also got on the next layer over, typically a can opener on one side and a bottle opener on the other that can also double as a flathead screwdriver there. Just a, a handy little set of tools that actually has a lot in common with the original Swiss Army knife, the original issued to the Swiss Army, which you see in the modern day Victorinox Pioneer. Obviously those didn't uh, have a bottle opener back in the day, but they did have a driver as well as a, uh, a tin can type of opener back in the day. And these are kind of the modern incarnations of those things. You'll also typically on a scout style knife, find a bale here on the end, it makes it easy to uh, attach to a lanyard or other kind of loop. Uh, it's just one other way to carry this since most of these knives, like most Swiss Army knives, do not have pocket clips. Now, as far as the materials go, with a, a multi-blade implement like this at about 18 bucks, you kind of know what to expect. It, everything is on the uh, sort of the lower end entry level stuff. You have a seven CR stainless steel, easy to maintain, but won't hold an edge forever. And you certainly don't have genuine stag. This is a staglon imitation material. And now on the higher end, we've got that Boker camp knife. Like I said, coming in about 209 right now. And this one features genuine stag, not a, uh, an imitation material. A couple different options as well. There's some bone and wood handle options in this series. Now, in terms of the tools on this knife, you actually have the same number of tools or the, the same tools that are on the standard Scout model with the addition of a few things. First off here on the back, you can see we've got that corkscrew. Uh, I think besides the toothpick and tweezers, the corkscrew might be kind of the signature Swiss Army knife implement that a lot of people think about. You've got it on here. And they've also moved the awl onto the back spring of the knife there. This does a couple things. One, it actually allows you to put maybe a little bit more force onto it since you can kind of hold it like you would a, a push dagger or other kind of punch and get a little more leverage when you're going through something. Then the only thing they do on the top side that's different is where the awl would be on a standard scout knife. They give you a smaller kind of clip point pen knife blade which is really great. You get an extra edge to play around with and a smaller blade for more controlled cuts, especially doing uh, small carving and whittling and that sort of thing. Now the materials here on the steel, it is on the simpler side as well. What you're paying for here is just that old world German craftsmanship. These do come out of Boker's Solingen facilities and it's just put together really nicely. What's more to say, it's a fantastically built knife with a ton of heritage. All right, next up are some knives from Swiza, which is actually another Swiss company, although you can't call it a Swiss army knife because these were never issued to the Swiss army there, but these are Swiss multi-tool slip joints. 
and they're almost as old as Victorinox themselves. Uh, but they've got a few different models. They all essentially share the same handle shape. I've got three of the four colors we've got on the site right now, black, red, blue, and there's also a white handle available. Now they've gone with a shape to the handle that's maybe a little less neutral than the perfectly oval shape that is typical of a Swiss Army knife. And they've also gone with a material that's kind of a hard rubber. There's a little bit of give to it, so you get a little bit more traction in the hand, definitely than the smooth red-handled scaled knives that, uh, that Victorinox puts out across the majority of their lineup. This model right here is the D1. It's the D1 all black, actually, because you've got a black blade. And one thing you'll notice is the tools on these are easier to open than your, your typical Swiss Army knife, because instead of a nail nick, you've actually got a small blade cut out. It's not a one hand opener. It is still designed to be used with two hands, but you don't even really need to use your fingernail because the flesh of your fingertips can get in that hole and pull the blade out quite easily. Now, as far as the cutting experience goes on this knife, it's a simple stainless again, but it's got a nice full flat grind, just like the Swiss Army knives, that is gonna cut very efficiently. And they've angled it down a little bit. It kind of follows the line of the spine, but what that does is it presents the edge itself at a very aggressive angle for really kind of powerful cuts, which is kind of nice. It's a little bit of a different kind of experience. Now, one of the nice things you're gonna find on these Swiza knives that you don't see on most of the Swiss Army knives out there is the blade itself is actually locking. It still is a slip joint, but you've actually got a locking liner in there as well, designed to uh, kind of protect you from some of the smaller, uh, smaller hazards of a non-locking blade. They're fairly easy to, to unlock as well. You actually just push the, uh, the cross emblem here on the front of the handle. You can either do it one-handed, and that is doable, but it's still a slip joint, so maybe a little bit trickier to do. It's still very easy to do two-handed though, but it's really nice to have that extra degree of safety. So like I said, I've got the D1 here. You've also got a nice sharp awl, as well as the corkscrew on the back. And you don't have a toothpick, but you do have a pair of tweezers on this knife, which is black in the case of this all black version. Now that's the D1. As you move up to the higher numbers in the series, they essentially add more tools. The blue one I've got here is the D3, and it swaps in a Phillips head screwdriver rather than the corkscrew on the back spring there. And then same tools on the front then just with the addition of the can opener on the side here with a small flat head screwdriver and the bottle opener on the other side with a larger flat head. And as you can see when I was opening that on the bottle opener side there even is that half stop there which if you need to uh, kind of break loose a slightly more stubborn screw you might be able to get a little bit more torque on it by using it in that halfway open position. And then you've also got those cutouts in the implement itself, makes it very easy to open and close. And then the largest one I've got here on the table is the first red Swiss knife, uh, first red Swiss Army knife competitor we've looked at. Same set of tools, we're back to the corkscrew on the back, but we get the addition of a nice wood saw and it's executed very well. You can tell it's nice and sharp. Fit and finishes here is really good, maybe even a little bit better than Victorinox on their wood saws, but who make a very good wood saw to begin with, but this is quite nice as well. But they're really well made, they offer a very compelling alternative, and the prices on them are still kind of in line. They start uh, at about 22 bucks for some of the smaller models, on up to, I have my notes here, uh, we're about 42 on this D5 that I'm holding. All right, next we are back to Boker. They had that camp knife earlier, but their tech tool series is more closely focused on being a Swiss Army knife competitor. And there's a bunch of different models in this series across two different sized frames and three different sets of handle materials, each available with a few different sets of implements. But I'll start on the smaller side with the Mini Tech Tools. This is the Mini Tech Tool 3 and it comes with a zebra wood handle material. Uh, so it's really nice to see kind of that blending of the, the high tech and the old school in a little way. Blade steel here gets an upgrade. We got 12C27, which is a really finely grained Swedish steel. Nice and easy to maintain, but can still take a very sharp edge very easily. And it's a nice little bump up from the steel you would typically get in a Swiss Army knife. We've got a hollow grind here, keeps it nice and thin behind the edge. And on this particular model, we've got a second implement that combines a few features 
into it. One thing, you've got a bottle opener, which officially makes it a multi-tool. You've also got the flathead there at the end, and you've also got a hook knife here right behind that, uh, that screwdriver head. And it is sharp or beveled on both sides, but this could work really well uh, for string, a few different uses like that. I probably wouldn't recommend this as a hunting knife, even though that's the first thing my mind goes to when I see a, a hook shape like this. Uh, but really good for opening packages, especially clam packs. You can kind of get your uh, angle this into the side of that plastic packaging and just rip along the side without pushing through with the, uh, the non-locking blade here, which can get a little bit uh, intimidating here and there. So that's a nice little tool. You can also get a pair of scissors uh, instead of this or in addition to this in the mini tech tool body. Now the prices on these mini tech tools uh, start just over 20 bucks for the G10 single blade versions going up to a little bit over 35 or around 35 uh, for the most expensive versions in this line that you can get. All right, next I'm gonna jump up to the larger sized tech tool. Uh, and this is the City 7 in that range. And it comes with a black G10 handle, uh, although the large frame is available also with zebra wood as well as an ebony wood option. Now, the reason I think this knife gets the City designation is you've actually got a pocket clip on this knife. Again, a rarity in slip joint multi-tools like the Swiss Army knives and the other stuff out there. And it is reversible, uh, well not reversible, but you can change which end of the knife it's on to tailor the carry that way if you wish. Tools on this particular model, although there are uh, options with fewer or more tools than this, you've got an awl here on the backside, nice and sharp, can or sorry, uh, wine bottle opener there as well. Then on the front, again, you've got that nice main blade, hollow ground from 12C27. And I really like the shape here. It's more of a uh, kind of a classical drop point shape rather than the spear point shapes you get on a Swiss Army knife. You'll also see a nice wood saw, again, very finely made. Got your bottle opener and your can openers as well, and a pair of scissors on this knife. And you'll see, rather than most Swiss Army knives that have a simple spring, you've actually got the back spring of the scissors kind of anchored into the back spring of the knife itself. It uses that resistance to form kind of a stronger uh, stronger pair of scissors than most of those Swiss Army knives typically have. Excepting, of course, some of the uh, the Wenger models that got rolled into Victorinox, some inside baseball. There are some, uh, some Swiss Army knives with this style of scissors, but by and large, you're not gonna find them. Last but not least, you've also got a nice glass breaker there on the end, which it's kind of a, uh, a bit of a surprise on a knife like this, but that's pretty cool. Uh, again, a few different handle options available. And the one I haven't talked about yet is the orange glow in the dark. This is only available though on single bladed models right now. And I know I said I wasn't gonna talk about those, but this is just such a cool handle material and it's in the same series. So I wanted to bring it up. They're really cool. They kind of glow, not a typical green. It has a, a yellowy, orangey glow to it. A little, maybe a little more yellow. Um, that's just pretty neat and they glow pretty brightly as well. And I just love the color even when it's not glowing. It's nice and neutral. Uh, well, maybe not neutral, but it's nice and non-threatening. It's just a simple tool right there in your pocket. Prices on all of these guys uh, on the large tech tools start at about 42 bucks going on up uh, to about 69 for the, uh, the full-fledged versions with all the tools that you can get. All right, one of the things you'll hear people ask for, or at least something I hear people ask for a lot in our comments section whenever we talk about a Swiss Army knife is I wish they would upgrade the blade steel. And for those of you out there, this is kind of the first real option to come along. This is the MKM Malga 6. You've got M390 blade steel in a quote unquote Swiss Army format. Really nice and they, uh, they're they decently priced for what you get, only 109 bucks, which is certainly more than anything else we've seen so far. But again, for what you get, an M390 blade and a bunch of other, other implements made in Italy, I think it's a pretty good price. That blade itself is almost two and three quarters of an inch M390, like I said, nice heavy stone washed finish for a nice kind of working aesthetic and a full flat grind for easy slicing. But even before you notice that M390 blade, you'll notice the micarta handles. You've got green and natural right now, and the handles themselves are actually removable. The knife is still pinned, so you can't take the whole knife apart, but you can take the scales off, maybe do some customizing if you wish. Now, as far as the rest of the implements on the Malga 6, you actually, you do have all the implements that you get 
in that typical scout knife pattern and by proxy, the original Swiss army knife set of tools. You've got your blade, can opener and bottle opener. And like the Boker camp king or camp knife from earlier, they moved the awl to the back spring as well and added that corkscrew. They actually leaned into that uh, kind of food vibe a little bit with this knife that, you know, suggested by that corkscrew. They also give you, instead of a second blade like that, uh, that camp knife does, a small cocktail fork, which is kind of fun. Make a great picnic knife, as it were. Now, I know some folks out there are a little skeptical about this and wished maybe they'd done something a little bit different. I can say in our talks with MKM, based on how the, uh, the Malga 6 is received, you'll see Malgas with other numbers on the end with some slightly different set of tools, but it is gonna depend on how well these sell. But I can say it's put together really well, which is quite nice. Now, as far as carry on these, no pocket clip here, but MKM actually do offer a small magnetic pouch sheath, which is really nice. It's just a simple leather pouch with a magnetic latch, essentially that folds over the edge of your pocket and it can fit one of these tools. And in fact, is a great option for carrying any smaller pocket knife like these that do not have a pocket clip. All right, now we're gonna venture into uh, a little bit of crossover type of stuff that is still gonna be a good alternative to a Swiss Army knife, I think, but is starting to get a little bit, uh, a little bit of distance between the archetype of a Swiss Army knife. And one of the things you'll find on these is a one hand opening blade. And that's the Leatherman Free T series. We've got the two and the four right now. Now these are made in the USA, which is nice. And I'll start here with the Free T2. First thing, like I mentioned, one hand opening blade. You've got 420HC, just a simple stainless, uh, but maybe a little bit more edge retention than the, the Swiss Army knives out there. You also get a lock, which is right here. And what I like about the lock, it's easy to operate one handed and you don't have to put your fingers in the path of the edge of the blade itself. So it's just an inherent degree of safety that I appreciate. Now you've got a stainless steel body here, which is stippled for a little bit of texture and a few other tools as well. And they're actually held in with magnets. And the way you get to them is with your thumb. You actually push out right there on the end. And that kind of brings the whole complement out where you can just pick what you want, fold the rest in, and then all those tools lock in the open position. Again, really nice thing. Shares that same locking bar essentially with the main blade itself. Now, as far as the other tools here, you do have an awl with a nice sharpenable edge, a nice sharp right out of the box, but it's easy, gonna be easy to keep sharp as well. Also Phillips head and flat head screwdrivers. Moving up to the free T4, we've got uh, more tools as you would expect. We've also got a deep carry pocket clip here, which is nice. Although it is maybe a little bit bulky for, uh, for what you're getting here, but it's a nice option and it is removable if you wanna take it off. Now we've got a locking mechanism on both sides because we've actually got tools coming out of, uh, of the front and the back side of this. On the main side, you've still got that nice one hand opening blade as well as your Phillips, or sorry, your flathead screwdriver and a file here, single cut on one side and cross cut on the other. That of course also has a nice flat spot on the end here that can be used as a smaller flathead screwdriver. And one thing you'll notice about these versus uh, a typical Swiss Army knife tool is the edges are a little crisper. So you might get a little bit better lockup or better interface with the screw heads as you're using them. Now the other thing you'll see on this front side is We've got a pair of tweezers. No toothpick here, but we do have those tweezers making a reappearance on this range. Then here on the back side, the tools we have there. Again, you've got the same awl that you saw on the T2, the same Phillips head, and now you've also got a nice pair of scissors. And this one also uses a uh, kind of an integrated back spring rather than a, uh, a smaller simple leaf spring for a little bit more strength in its action. But both of these free models are put together really well. Uh, I do appreciate that they're made in the USA. That's something I always like about what Leatherman does. And the prices on them are pretty decent too. Uh, about 60 bucks for the top end model and 40 for the bottom. All right, next up I've got one more Leatherman and this is the Style PS. And this is a little bit different than most what I would consider Swiss Army Knife alternatives because like the full size Leatherman, it is built around a pair of pliers. So it's more a pair of plier or a pliers based multi-tool than a knife based multi-tool. But I wanted to mention this one in particular 
because I think it makes a uh, an interesting alternative to the keychain sized Swiss Army knives like the Classic or the Rambler, that sort of thing. Now this particular model, the PS, actually has no knife blade on it. This is a considered a TSA friendly tool, which is really nice because you can carry a, a tool like this with you without running afoul of those. And I actually have one of these uh, that I take on pretty much every trip where I'm getting on a plane. We got that main set of pliers there with the, uh, the wire cutters there at the base. Fold it up and then you've got two main tools accessible from the outside. You've got a file on one end with a small screwdriver there on the top. And you've got a pair of scissors on the other side, again, with that integrated back spring. Also, a pair of tweezers here again. And last but not least, the carabiner hole there at the back will work as a bottle opener too. And prices on these are about 35 bucks. All right, next up, I've got an option here from Gerber. And in a way, I feel like this is uh, kind of in line with the, uh, the Leatherman Free series we just looked at. But nice and compact, this is the Armbar series. And there's an Armbar cork with a corkscrew and an Armbar drive with a bit driver, which I'll get to right now. Might as well, right? Now, this part of the implement only works in the full open position. I, well, I, technically, it would work in the half position, but there is no half stop and there's no lock, so you do have to be a little bit careful when using this. But you've got the versatility of standard screwdriver bits. It even comes with a two-sided one with Phillips and flathead built right in. In addition to that, pulling out here from that same side, we've got a small awl that is nice and sharp right out of the box. And we've also got, as you can see, that pair of scissors there, which you do have to unfold to use. Again, that nice, strong, integrated backspring design. And there's a good bit of length to the jaws on these scissors as well. It's probably one of the longer scissors you can get on pretty much any multi-tool until you get to the, uh, the ones that are based around a pair of scissors. But even larger than like Leatherman's full-size models, uh, there are full-size multi-tools with scissors on them. So that's pretty nice. Now the blade itself on the Armbar series is locking. As you can see right there, it's got a nice liner lock and it's one hand opening too thanks to that, uh, that opening hole in the blade itself. Blade steel, simple stainless here as well, but a nice utility shape, fairly thick. It's not gonna be the slicer that most Swiss Army knives typically are, but you're gonna get more kind of outright, stronger workaday utility out of it for some heavier work out there. But I'll fold that back up, turn it over again. Orange aluminum here on the side, but you've got a few different colors out there. But we've got one more trick, or this thing has one more trick up its sleeve, here at the back. Looks just like a hammering plate there, and it certainly is usable as that. You can use that to tap in uh, some things, small nails, that sort of thing. Also, it pops out so you don't lose that bottle opener functionality, which as we all know, any good multi-tool has gotta have. All right, last but not least, I've got a few items from Spyderco and their Clip-A-Tool series, which may seem a little out of left field, and indeed these aren't the, uh, the full-fledged multi-tools that, uh, that some of these are more geared towards some of these smaller couple implement versions of Swiss Army knives out there. Uh, but you've got three different versions of this standard Clip-A-Tool, and they come with a very typical Spyderco shape. It's kind of based around the, uh, the ladybug or man bug shape. Maybe it's a little bit bigger. I actually haven't held them up side by side in a while, so I can't say for sure. But you've got that same type of shape as those knives, two inches, eight CR series steels, maybe a little bit better edge retention than some of these knives in front of us that we've seen so far. Nice full flat grind. It is one hand openable, but it's easier with two. Now there's no lock on these knives. It is still a slip joint, but what I like about it is your main index finger is gonna be right there around the pivot, spanning into the front section of the blade, that kind of finger choil on other Spyderco models. And what that means is if the blade does start to close, your finger's gonna keep it from closing further. So I like that added bit of safety there. Handles here, stainless steel, pocket clip, so easy to carry. And depending on which version you get, the second tool is gonna be different. This is the bottle opener screwdriver tool. You can see right there, still has that uh, kind of signature spider hole. But like those swizes from earlier, that hole does make it easy to open. Definitely easier for me than uh, a lot of nail mix out there. Now, as far as the other versions in this series, you can get uh, this with a pair of scissors there, as well as a small kind of narrow serrated blade as well. And those all come in uh, no matter which you get, just over 32 bucks. All right, last but not least, and we are, I admit, getting a little bit peripheral here, but this is the full size, the Clip-A-Tool standard from Spyderco. 
And although there's only two layers of tools, I kind of think of this as an alternative to some of the larger Swiss Army knives out there, like the one hand opening Trekker, maybe not that particular model, but that size model that typically do come with one hand opening blades. Because you do get that here, nice utility Warncliffe style of shape, HCR 13 MOV stainless steel. It's still got that great Spyderco geometry I was talking about, and full size blade. We're at about three and a half inches here. So you are ready for a good bit of work and you've got a liner lock to hold it open. Still able to open it uh, or close it one handed, even though you do have those two extra implements there kind of getting in the way, but not enough to impede the use. But here we have the bottle open or sorry, the can opener on the one side with the small screwdriver and the bottle opener on the other with the larger flathead. Now there's also a rescue version of this knife where the second layer of tools consist of a rescue hook, a sharpened hook blade like you saw on that Boker mini tech tool from earlier, as well as a small flathead screwdriver. Non-locking on both of these, but really nicely put together. Both of them come in uh, just over 62 bucks, got that G10 handle as you can see, and the two position pocket clip for very easy carry. All right, that's all I've got to you for today in terms of the uh, kind of the best Swiss Army knife alternatives that I can think of out there right now. If you have some other suggestions, we'd love to hear them in the comments. In the meantime, if you want to get your hands on any of these, we will leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. And as always, make sure you sign up for our knife rewards program while you're there, because you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next knife if you're going to put your money down on one of these knives anyway. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time.